But they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. As we draw near to Lent, my mind goes back to the part of Holy Week I didn't understand for most of my life, the choice of the crowd to release Barabbas instead of Jesus. I was simply taught that the Jews chose to release a murderer instead of Jesus. If that actually happened, and we can argue biblical scholarship another day, describing it this way makes no sense. Why would you release a murderer at all, let alone instead of Jesus, for Christ's sake. <laughs> it wasn't until later, until I learned there was not just one, but many people who claimed to be the Jewish Messiah. And while I knew that people expected Jesus to be a different kind of Messiah, a militaristic one who would overthrow the Romans, the implications of that expectation didn't really hit me until recently. Because from the point of view of Rome, Jesus wasn't a one-off claiming to be king of the Jews. He was one of a series. He was just the latest leader of the latest rebellion. To Pilate in Rome, Jesus would be viewed the same as an American today would view a leader of the Islamic State or Al-Qaeda. Put yourself in the situation of the crowd that day. Your ruler stands above you. Loyal and armed guards and police are on every side. Their hands hover near their weapons, waiting for an excuse to arrest you and your family, or worse. And then your ruler says to you, Do you want me to release Charles Manson or, and he looks pointedly at the guards and police surrounding you, the Al-Qaeda agent? It doesn't matter to them that you know the supposed Al-Qaeda agent is not a terrorist. That's a case of mistaken identity. They got the wrong guy. But they decided who he was and whether or not he was guilty before any trial actually started. Your rulers already intimidated those who have disagreed with them. They've already punished those who just disagreed with them. You could have the courage to do the right thing, to release the innocent man and run the very real risk that you'll be seen as a sympathizer. Reprisals would be a near certainty. Or you could do the easy thing, releasing the criminal instead. It's a hard choice. It's a choice between doing what is right and doing what is easy. A choice between what in, doing what is right and doing what is safe. Which brings us quite literally to this week. To the United States. To a ruler who has ostracized those who dare speak against him. To a ruler who has used his power to profit himself and those who support him. Who has intimidated and demonized those who simply disagree, let alone oppose him. It's already too late to do things the proper way. They threw that chance away last week when they decided to not hold witnesses or have new evidence. But there was a chance, and I'm recording this after the fact, and it, perhaps it was the last chance to not repeat history, to not be intimidated into doing the wrong thing, to not repeat actions that have allowed evil to flourish in the past. There was a chance this week to do the right thing. There was a chance for the people, the people who are supposedly acting on our behalf, to do the right thing. A chance for them to show whether or not they or we would shout, we have no king but Caesar, or if we would have the courage to speak the truth. Mm -hmm.